as we get into Michigan this week, and this is the, what is this, the Firekeepers Casino 400, I'm, I'm guessing, and I think I'm going to be right here, that as we look at the, let's, let's start actually with the, where are the odds? Let's start with the, uh, I think they're team props. Oh, yeah. I know who's going to be top on this one. Look at this. No! Can you believe this? Tied with Toyota? No way. Can you believe this? That's terrible. That is terrible. Can you believe no this? Respect. No respect whatsoever. Wow. That's why I wanted to look at this first. Wow. Terrible. Well, hey. <clears throat> Take it. Yes. Go on this all day. <laughs> Go on this. <laughs> if we can't give you advice for a trend that is as just one-sided for as long as this trend is, look, it doesn't guarantee anything. No, nope. but this is this is the best trend we could ever give you, especially from a manufacturer odds going into a race. The best. You can't do better than this, and you need to take advantage of it. And in case you have no idea what we're talking about, Ford has won nine straight races at Michigan, which I just, I, I, I don't think I've seen that at all anywhere from any manufacturer. Nine was nine in a row. Yeah. It, it, and 10 out of the last, what, 14? It, it, it's ridiculous. Um, this is, you know, Chevrolet and Ford's home track. It's the one everybody wants to win. And both of them bring, you know, their best pieces to this track. Yes, it's a one-time uh, race. It's not, you know, you, get, you don't get the two, two stops here every season like we used to in the past. But it's the one everybody wants to win because it's in their backyard and all their employees come. And so Ford definitely ups their game. Um, yeah, there's, it, it, this is the track of Ford. <laughs> certainly recently without question so to see them continue to get the odds um, that we've talked about have been disrespectful to their abilities with the drivers and teams that they've got this season uh, to still be that at this at this racetrack in particular is honestly quite surprising now there are a couple of, uh, of important uh, side notes and that is that out of the out of the last nine, Actually, out of the last eight of those nine, Kevin Harvick has five of those wins. And, of course, Kevin ain't around. And I think you could even look at it where only three current drivers, active drivers, have won here since 2018. And that's three out of the last nine. That's because you threw out Harvick and also Boyer. So... And those are Fords, Busher, Blaney, Logano. Okay. Uh, Toyota has not won since 2015. And they're over the that's over the last 13. And yet they are the same odds to win this race as Ford, who's won nine straight. You got one manufacturer, 0 for 15, 0 for 13, one that's won nine straight, and they got the same odds. Okay. It's crazy. Uh, yeah. Uh, now, as far as starting position, unlike last week at Richmond, it does matter more at Michigan because 15 yeah. of the last 18 winners started in the top six rows. Um, and this is interesting because just – I don't know. I don't know if this has changed over time, but I just always used to th think that you needed to be – or the cars that – if you were on a short track that – the, the, the cars that were up front had a much better chance of winning because it's a shorter track as opposed to a larger one, the speedway in essence. But that seems to be, this is like an example of how that's not necessarily the truth because Richmond, as we said last week, you can, you can win races by not starting up front. And yet that's a short track here. This is a, a much larger track and yet you need to start up front. And I get why, because there's you got speed. It's a bigger track. There's speed you're dealing with, but still, it's just a, the whole concept's a little bit weird to me. 
Yeah, six of the last eight as well started in the first two rows. Um, so I think you're likely going to have to have uh, uh, somebody that's starting inside the top five to win. And the reason why is because it's aerodynamics. It's the dirty air when you hit these speeds. Michigan is an extremely fast track and you're on throttle for so long um, in those turns. If you're trailing somebody in order to get the grip that you need to be able to keep that high speed through those turns, you've got to have clean air. So uh, being able to get out front, stay out front and stay there for the rest of the race certainly makes your life a lot easier than having to come through dirty air. And then for another reason, if you have your car set up to work in dirty air and you do get to the front, it's going to handle differently when you're in clean air. So you're not going to be as fast as you were before. Uh, so finding that that mixture and preferably with the clean air qualifying up front, that is definitely the way to do it at this high speed track. Now, with Michigan being at a two mile track and, and California, I have no idea what's going to happen there. But uh, so there's no other two mile tracks and it's, there's really no other track to compare Michigan to, even though I guess some people believe Kansas is as good as a similar similar track out there do you believe in that or do you just say michigan is just separate and i'm not even going to worry about any other track michigan is separate the banking is is extremely high it, it's extremely fast um it's long it's not as long as say a poke you know pocono and indy are are you know in the ballpark of being as long uh, but they don't have the the banking that that michigan has so the turns are completely different then the next thing you could compare it to would be something like a talladega or daytona or possibly even an atlanta uh, but those are restrictor plates and we're we're talking about the drafting drafting does come into play here because they do hit such high speeds but you do have to back off in the corners which makes michigan a completely unique unique track for me okay uh, by the way, uh, if you want to look at it also uh, regarding the two rows, top two rows, uh, we can actually expand it to 11 of the last 18. Uh, the winner has started in the top two rows. So really, you got 15 of the last 18, top six rows, 11 of the last 18, top two rows, including six pole sitters out of those 18. But we got a big but here. And that is two of the last four winners started 16th and 20th i got another but but those were won by kevin harvick so not a but but a so i think what it says is i'm still going back to the you really need to be in those tops you know two to six rows you need to be there because it's that's telling you that even though two of those winners harvick being of course both of them was able to win from the 16th or 20th well, that's just because Kevin Harvick just dominates at the track and he doesn't doesn't matter where he starts he's going to do well but he's like the only one he's the exception so uh, if you're not starting in the top six rows you're probably not looking too good so that's why qualifying is going to mean an awful lot as we decide what to do as far as wagering on these races this week and as you can see there who the favorites are matter of fact these odds have changed already since earlier today um i was looking at him around close to lunchtime and larson was at five so they're already going back in our favor here a little bit larson was the favorite now he's tied with hamlin so they're both at six so six to seven so that's good and he got blaney and truex there and let me just see if anyone else is at eight to one yeah reddick's at eight to one so you got larson Hamlin six, Blaney seven, Truex Reddick eight. So out of this group, look, you got the logical Blaney that sticks out because he did not have uh, a, the car uh, that he wanted, the speed that he wanted last week, and he knew it. And Richmond is just not a great track for him, and we talked about that. But yet he did what he wanted to do. He said he wanted to finish, and that I could just take a top ten, I'll be happy, and he finished eleventh. So he, he, he did what he had. So what does that tell you? I think his momentum is still there. And so because I think his momentum is still there, uh, and he's driving a Ford, and he's hot still, maybe, um, then why wouldn't you like Blaney here at 7-1 to one out of this group? So th so th that's what I would go with. Um, uh, but I would also take a look at Hamlin uh, based on his history here. 
Uh, matter of fact, his last six average finish is 3.5. So even though he's not at a Ford, that's awfully impressive. But I was liking Truex a lot better this morning because he was 12 to 1. Now he's down to 8 to 1. That's uh, getting a little low for me for a driver that's in a slump right now. And then the one that really sticks out, and he's still there at 8 to 1, is Reddick. Look, we have been all over Reddick for the past month in all these races he's been in, and we've we've almost won the races, and he's come close, and he still has that going for him. But, and this is the biggest but of the show, the man's average finish in five cup races is 26th. <laughs> What the hell is he doing at eight to one? No clue. Uh, he led seven laps, though I, I guess last year. So maybe and he does all. have an Xfinity win. <laughs> he does. Yeah, not to say um, that, that is a big butt. Uh, certainly at this track, plus the fact that he's not driving a Ford. Um, but yeah, I, I think Reddick's been racing so well. I'm not changing my perspective on him. I think he's just got to get over. I think it's just a mental thing. He's got to get the right mental um, things out of his way to be able to not make that choking mistake in the last couple of laps. And I think he can do it. So I, I like Tyler Reddick. Uh, you're getting you know, comparatively good odds. Certainly take him every day and night over Truex at this point because Truex can't buy himself any kind of a good finish, um, whether he's got a fast car or not. So things just aren't going his way. He's lucky he's got as many points from the early part of the season as he does. Um, Hamlin, um, yeah, good record, but not as good as Kyle Larson. So if you're looking at the two uh, at even odds right now, uh, Chevrolet as well over a Toyota at Michigan, I'd probably go Kyle Larson. He won three in a row here, uh, which is pretty darn impressive. Uh, finished seventh and fifth the last two seasons here. Um, so out of that bunch, certainly I think Blaney stands out because he's in a Penske Ford. Second guess would probably be a Kyle Larson, and probably immediately right behind that would be Reddick. Yeah, I mean, uh, I wasn't as interested in Larson this morning because he was 5-1 to one and the clear, like, alone favorite. And I just, no, I'm not going down that road. But you're getting now a little bit, another point and a half, and he's now where he should be, tied with Hanlon. Uh, because, yes, Larson has three wins. Hamlin has two. Uh, Hamlin's been better lately, but uh, Larson does statistically, if you take a look at the fact that he has 18 less races there, uh, statistically he has been a better driver at Michigan over Denny Hamlin. Uh, but, yeah, Truex, the reason, the only reason, because they're not, they don't care about how he's racing now, but the only reason why I guess he's 8-1 to one is because he's at seven straight top tens, at the track, five of those are top fives, runner-up last year leading 47 laps, but keep this in mind, he's never won at Michigan. So, And he's a guy that can't buy a win right now either, so the fact that it would come at a track where he's got over half of his finishes, or about half of his finishes being inside the top 10, yet has never won, um, yeah, I, I would avoid him. And then you have uh, the next group here, Bell, Logano, Kozlowski, Byron. So you got um, another driver that should not be at 9-1, to one, and that's Christopher Bell. Look, we've been touting Bell and Reddick the last uh, couple of months, and but not this week. I mean, yeah, Bell's better than Reddick, uh, but his average in five cup races is only 164 and his best finish is 13th, and he's done it three times. So he's never finished in the top 12. And now the only good thing is, compared to Reddick, is that at least uh, he was on the pole last year and finished 13th. And the year before that, he finished second, excuse me, 26th. He started second and led 31 laps. So he's looked a lot better early in the races based on the fact that he's qualified well. But once he gets out there, he's not finishing well. And I'm sorry, it's just uh, no. And look, Christopher Bell, we didn't talk about it, but Christopher Bell, what, what is he doing speeding on pit road? I <laughs> mean... Shot himself in the foot completely. Absolutely. He, he's the best driver out there. 
I mean, it would have been nice to see Dylan and Bell match up. That would have been nice to see what would have happened. But what are you doing? It's the only reason that you, you screwed up. You know, I, he was he was my top pick. And um, matter of fact, Lara, it was her top pick too. I know she commented on it. So we, we had a little back and forth on it. She said she still did pretty well, even though that was the case. Uh, but yeah, uh, I'm sure there were a lot of people who picked Christopher Bell that were not very happy at him speeding. Anyway, uh, and then you got Logano, Kozlowski, a couple of forwards, even though they were teammates, much different, which is kind of strange. Uh, this is one track that these guys did not have similar results when they were teammates because Kozlowski has never won at this racetrack, and yet Logano has won three times. Uh, matter of fact, all three times he's won, he was on the pole. So he's been he's won the pole five times at the, at Michigan. He's won three out of the five on the pole. The only negative is he has not had a lap led in his last four races here. But I don't see why they're this close odds wise. Logano should be clearly better than Kozlowski in my mind as far as the odds are concerned. I probably put Kozlowski about fourteen to one or something like that. And uh, Byron, I just don't see any reason to go with Byron except for the fact that he was runner-up in 2021, leading 18 laps, and that's it. That's all he has. He hasn't looked all that good with the next gen, uh, and he's not exactly on fire right now. Uh, so out of this group, I'd go with the two Fords, and I would go Logano. Uh, <clears throat> similar but slightly different. So I agree completely. Bell's out of the picture because he's done – not much at this track and he's in a Toyota. Byron hasn't done much recently. He's in a Chevrolet, so maybe give him a little bit of an advantage over Bell there. I would easily go with the two Fords. Uh, however, um, the only but that you didn't mention about Joey Logano has been his up and down nature. Oh, and that's right. Yes. All the way up until the last lap. That's right. He was on a good week, so this week it's his turn to be down, right? Um, Keselowski, I would go with him all day out of this bunch because um, he has never won at this track. You're exactly right. It is his home track, and he wants to win here extremely bad, badly. Finally made it into victory lane as team owner with Busher last year, and last year he qualified 12th, finished 4th, and led 15 laps. I think Keselowski brings it this weekend, and hopefully he can get his hometown win. What I don't understand is why was Logano 19th last week they kept Hamlin at second I don't understand oh, depend, I, I, it depends on did they call the race at the line or did they call the race when the caution came out I saw the was... yellow come out before Dylan crossed the line Okay, it was I think right after he had gotten rid of Hamlin but I can't believe that many cars past Logano before Dylan crossed the finish line. I guess they did. I just am amazed they, that that many did. It's either that because his car was beat up, obviously. Uh, so it's either that or you might have to actually cross the line after it goes yellow. Um, so, or, or maybe it goes back to the last timing loop or something like that. Maybe I'm wrong. So, yeah, I, I, he's... He was trashed, so yeah. maybe maybe those cars slipped by by the time because uh, we couldn't see him. You know, we were looking at the finish, so I'm not yeah. sure exactly. And it's a was. short track, and it so does. there were a lot of cars that could have easily passed him really fast. So it does feel odd that he dropped that fast that quickly, though, with just one corner left to go. Yeah, but it was it, it actually was though an improvement. So he did go in the in, in the right direction, <laughs> if you want to stick with that. But look, he should have won, should've and won. it would have been perfect. Yeah. So yeah, good point to bring that out. All right, but maybe you know what? Maybe he'll uh, based on what happened last week. Maybe uh, he'll he'll get one back this week. Okay. So because uh, he's still far down in the point standings. Yes. And he just almost he really should have had two wins in his last whatever four or five races. All right. We've had more wins this season. Yeah, not just those two. Yep, that's true. All right, and we got another Chevy here, Elliot. By the way, how bad were they in in, uh, in practice last week? The, I mean, well, I've never seen it before. They were yeah. awful, and they did nothing in the race. Yep. Um, anyway, Elliott, thirteen to one, and in his next gen races, he crashed and finished eleventh. No laps led, but 
And keep this in mind too. Out of the first, out, out, out of the three top fives he has here, it doesn't look as good now because they happened in his first three appearances, which were all runner ups, which is crazy to think about. So he has not had a top five in his last ten races, um, and it's not like he's in a good run right now. Uh, Busher's odds have gone down from eighteen to fifteen. So uh, I still like Busher, though, even as a defending champ at a Ford. I uh, didn't understand why he's 18 and still think 15 is maybe a little bit of a, of, of a good deal. Gibbs is 20. And even though Gibbs has a win in Xfinity, that was in 2022. Uh, he's just been okay in his two cup starts. Bub is the one that is still 20 to 1 and is definitely a play because in the next gen, he led 21 laps last year. And he finished second two years ago, leading 22 laps from the pole. So his two best races at this track have come with the next gen. And you're getting 20 to 1. So I would go Busher and Wallace here, Gibbs third, and I'm just skipping Elliott again. Yeah, couldn't, couldn't agree with you more. I think Wallace with the laps led, it's not like he just got out front for a couple and then gave it up. He was out there for 20 plus laps both of those times. <clears throat> Started on pole in 2022, uh, finished as the runner up there. So he's been getting better at this track and yeah, he's in a Toyota, so it might be a little bit more difficult for him. Uh, Busher, Ford, obviously past winner here, extremely good. Um, so, you know, right in that battle for the, the 16th and final playoff position with Bubba Wallace as well. So this will be interesting to watch these three drivers this week. I would give uh, Busher, I think, gets the edge because he's in a forward, but I think Wallace gets the bargain value based on his odds and the fact of he led 43 laps over the last two races here. And then Gibbs should be a solid top 10 for you, if not, you know, top 15 for sure, uh, if nothing goes wrong. So in that order, I do like Wallace based on the value that you're getting at 20 to 1. So if... If Wallace were to win, and then let's say some crazy driver wins, 101 dr shot driver wins Daytona the week after that, mm -hmm. and this is all possible, is Martin Truex Jr. in trouble? Yep. Okay. And that's the only <laughs> scenario that he's in trouble. Uh, yeah, unless you get two other crazy 101 shots win. Yeah, it just takes two... Two first-time winners this season, not named Truex, and in the next two races, and he's going to be sweating it. Okay. All right, here's the next group. we got Chastain, Kyle at 28, Bowman 30, and then we have Suarez. So, and then I think we have a big gap uh, for the big long shots. But uh, Chastain, you know, we talked about how this has just been a really bad season so far for Ross Chastain, and... He, you got to give him credit, though, because even though he didn't look all that fast last week, he finished fifth, and he was okay. He, he, he was pretty much hanging around the whole day. Didn't look like he was going to win a race, but he was still just hanging around. Deserved, deserved the top ten, the fifth place. Maybe that's a good sign that th they've got something going, because if you look at it uh, since the next gen... And again, big surprise with Chastain. But since the next gen, seventh last year, started second, led 16. And then the year before that, even though uh, he finished 24th, uh, he led 29 laps. So those are two good results for Chastain, two reasonably good showings for Chastain, who's dropped from 35 to 28 to 1. And his best finish, again, no big surprise, was his last Xfinity Series finish in that series when he finished seventh that was last year so his last several appearances at michigan in both series have been his best and and i'm only looking at as a long shot not as a favorite so i doubt he's not driving a ford though of course uh kyle well look we just don't know i mean because of what happened with austin dillon last week we don't know so in saying that uh, just keep in mind, it's not like it's not like Richmond or some of these other tracks where Kyle's dominated in the past. He's not dominated at Michigan. He only has one win. So I wouldn't go too crazy. But, hey, you know what? Maybe if he qualifies and practices the way that Dylan did last week, then, you know, I'll, 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 maybe if he's 15 to 1 or something, okay. Bowman could be interesting because he's also done pretty well lately, uh, even though he's in a Chevy. 
Uh, he led 19 laps before a steering issue uh, caused him to end his day last year. And he uh, finished ninth the year before that, even though he started 30th. So that's been his uh, story the last couple of years. Suarez has also done pretty well the last couple of years. Sixth last year, leading 12, and led 33 laps the year before that. But I just don't see Suarez winning two races in the same year. So out of those three, uh, I don't know. Maybe I'd take Chastain, but I can I can go any way. I'd probably still go Chastain and Bowman before Kyle Busch. Uh, with Kyle, I just need to see how he qualifies. Yeah, very interesting. Um, Chastain, we talked about in the past as well as being someone who, when he's good at a track, he is good at a track. And last two races, he's been good at this track. He led 29 laps and 16 laps in the last two years. Uh, the 29 laps led ended with a 24th place finish, but still he was out, out front for a significant amount of time. And at Michigan, you know, Richmond, we talk about like 100 laps led, 140 laps led. That's that's a really great night. Um, Michigan, 20 laps led at this place it is a long time out front. So that's no small feat for him to do that. And then qualified on the front row and finished seventh with 16 laps led there last year. So he's going to be good this weekend. The trend tells it as, as such and because it's a track that he's been good at. Uh, the other one um, hasn't done much in his career at this track, though, is Bowman for me, uh, and mainly because of the 19 laps led last year. Plus, we know that Chevrolet and Ford are the two manufacturers that you want to look at here. Hendrick, certainly one of the, or if not the biggest, or the, they are the biggest Chevrolet uh, contingent, so Bowman very much could come in, and I could see him sneaking in a win like he always does, especially considering those 19 laps led last year before he ended up having to drop out so i would probably choose chastain more from the fact that uh, this is a track that he appears to be good at and we know that that's a relative lock at, a, at at these types of tracks or these types of venues for him where he has that success then bowman just based on the fact of what type of car he's in all right and then again uh, all the other drivers are really uh deep long shots as you can see the odds here uh and that pretty much shows you uh, the area where Austin Dillon was last week at 150 to 1 when we were talking about the show last week. And he went off and won the race. So uh, out of all of those, let's see, the one, uh, the ones that would stick out for me, and you have to look at Ford, of course, when you get down here, uh, would be Berry and... You know, Gregson, th those would probably be the two. Uh, Berry has looked really good in the Xfinity Series. Uh, second, sixth, and fourth. Um, not so good so far in Cup, but that's okay. He crashed last year. Gregson, meanwhile, also crashed in his only Cup appearance in 22. But just like Berry, very good in three Xfinity Series appearances with a 2.7 average. So I, I would go with those two if you're looking for just a buck here or a buck there. Um, uh, otherwise, you know, it's just potluck if you wanted to throw a buck on, you know, Eric Jones or Todd Gilliland or whoever. But what about you? I was going to say, don't forget about Eric Jones. He just signed a multi-year extension with Legacy. Uh, the last two races, he's here at Michigan. He's finished 8th and 10th, and that 10th last year came from the 25th starting position. Uh, so don't don't sleep on Eric Jones. He's got a lot of momentum this week with that extension, plus the fact that he's been good here recently. But I can't disagree with you. you got to look at um, the Stuart Haas guys, um, Barry and Gregson. Uh, both look very good as well. Okay. Let's, uh, by the way, Suarez does come in with back-to-back -to -back top 10s and three top 11s in the last four races. So it's just a matter of, like I said, do you actually believe Suarez is going to win twice in one season before we even hit the playoffs? So to, I, I say the odds are against that. All right. So w w what will your picks be? Favorite, sleeper, long shot? Uh, so favorite, I will go ahead and go with Ryan Blaney. Uh, sleeper, we will go with... Keselowski, and then long shot. Hmm. 
Why not Jones? I'll go with Jones. All right. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and stick with Blaney as well. And then for my other, I'll go with Logano and Wallace. 